The following lesson is linked to Learning Outcome 1, Speaking and Listening, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate planning and research skills for oral presentations. Hi, I'm Charlotte. In this series of lessons, we've been learning how to write and deliver speeches. And we've been following Palessa's progress as she prepared for a class speech. And that's why I'm here at her school today. Her big day is over. She has just delivered her speech to her class, and I'm here to see how she got on. Hey, Palessa, how did it go? Hi, it went well. I was confident. I knew my words. I made good points, and I really got my ideas across. So you achieved your goal. You improved your English speech marks. Well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? What happened? Well, just when I thought the whole speech thing was over, my teacher said we'd be doing unprepared speeches in two weeks' time. Well, you're a good speaker now. Yes, but look how long it took me to write my speech. And I spent ages practicing it. There's no way I can stand in front of a class and do an unprepared speech. Relax. Let's get back to the studio because in today's lesson we are going to learn how to do unprepared or impromptu speeches. And you'll see that it can even be fun. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to plan an unprepared or impromptu speech and approach it with confidence. Unprepared or impromptu speeches are not just something that you have to do in school for marks. They might not be called unprepared or impromptu speeches, but there are lots of times that you will be expected to speak well without having time to prepare. For example, job interviews are a form of unprepared speech. You have to make the best impression possible and answer questions you are not prepared for. Impromptu speeches are also good training for when you find yourself in a meeting where you want to make a point clearly and effectively. Okay, I understand and I'm ready to do this, but how do you prepare for an unprepared speech? By doing a lot of what you've already been doing for your prepared speech. But there are a few more tips to keep in mind. To begin with, because you don't have time to learn your speech, the key points on your speech cards are even more important than they are for the prepared speech. Princess from Hope School is going to demonstrate how not to do this. The function of anti-violence organizations is to prevent people from getting hurt. The people in South Africa who suffer most are women and children. Hence, many groups focus on preventing violence against women and children only. I see what you mean. Princess shows quite clearly that if you don't have cue cards, you might end up waving a big piece of paper around. And what else do you think might be wrong with this speech? She just read her speech. I think she was a bit nervous, so she was reading her words and she didn't look up or make any eye contact. But I still don't know what to write in my speech cards. Before we go into that, let's see what the professionals have to say about impromptu speaking. We spoke to Tebe Ikalafeng, the marketing manager for Nike Africa, whose job relies on giving unprepared or impromptu speeches. It's very, very important to, uh, to know what you're going to talk about before you, you get up. So personally, I always take notes. I always take mental notes or I do physical notes on my notebook. Uh, before I get up there, the, f the three things I always try and I, I do for myself, I always try and remember either the one thing I want to communicate or the two or the three things I want to communicate, never to clutter my mind. And it's always important as well as to memorize or rehearse the speech in your mind and say, how am I going to introduce it? What am I going to say? And how am I going to finish? The most important, uh, the, most important uh, the easiest way to, uh, to enhance or to, uh, to en uh, enable yourself to become confident in everything you do is first you need to be an expert. You need to be an expert in what, you, in, in what you're talking about. You need to be an expert in what you're doing. Second, probably actually, I probably should say the most important thing is to understand yourself is to understand what you're comfortable with, 
and who you are as a person. And secondarily, you have to be an expert in that which you are comfortable with. And third, nothing beats practice. Practice, practice, practice. Golfers will tell you, the more they practice, the luckier they get. Similarly, when it comes to confidence, the more you practice, the more, the, you, the more confident you become. Because now you, you begin to look at this thing as, hey, I don't have to be afraid of people. But of course, the overriding thing is that giving a speech is a performance. So just put yourself in a different situation and say, hey, it is me, but I'm acting. But I'm acting real. For those who don't like speaking, it's a bit of a problem because communication is the only thing that happens every day. Communicating with friends, communicating with colleagues, communicating with your, your superiors. You've got to be confident at communicating, but you can choose the medium which you are comfortable with. Some people are much more comfortable speaking. Some people are much more comfortable writing. Some people are more comfortable drawing. It's a mode of communication. <laughs> One thing to watch out for is reading your speech. Because you are nervous, you might be tempted to write a short essay and then just read it. No one wants to watch a speech being read. But at the same time, no one will expect you to be as polished as if for a prepared speech. You have to find a compromise. You don't want to write out a full speech, but you don't want to stand up in front of everybody without knowing what you are going to talk about. Rather than writing out the whole of her speech, the learner who we saw earlier could have just noted the key ideas. The whole long version of the speech would look like this. But if we just put down the key points on the speech cards, it would look like this. The function of anti-violence organizations and preventing violence against women and children. There are several reasons why we use cards with keywords and ideas rather than writing everything out in full. Keywords help you to speak more naturally. Unless you are an actor, we do not speak to each other from a rehearsed script. So by just reminding yourself of your ideas, you will tend to be more relaxed and you will speak more naturally. Keywords on cards encourage you to make contact with your audience. You can't make eye contact with your audience when you are reading. And we already know how important making contact with your audience is from our previous lesson. By using your own words as you go along, there's no danger of losing your place. There is nothing worse than having to stop in the middle of what you are saying to find your place in your speech. Finally, it makes you aware of what you are saying. By having only notes, you are really forced to understand what you are talking about. But what if I get a topic I know nothing about? That's not likely to happen. Your teacher is not really out to get you. You're not likely to get a topic that you've never covered and then be expected to pull facts and figures out of your head. So what kind of topics are we likely to get? Your teacher will give you topics that you can add your own personal experiences to. Things like happiness is, how advertising dictates what we look like, when I'm alone, we are all victims. After you get your topic, you will be given about five to 10 minutes to prepare it and would be expected to speak for about a minute and a half. Use your preparation time to follow the exact same steps you used for your prepared speech. Let's go through them again. Always brainstorm your topic and write down all your ideas. Decide on the focus, in other words, what you want to say to the audience. Put your ideas into a logical order and use language that allows you to connect your ideas to one another. It is also a good idea to write an effective introduction and conclusion to your speech, even if there is limited time. As we learnt in our lessons on prepared speeches, these are the make or break points. So let's go through what makes a good impromptu speech. Palesa, refresh our memories regarding the advice that we got from Mr. Ikala Feng from Nike Africa. He said that first you need an effective introduction, then two or three good logical points of discussion, and close with an effective conclusion. You see, it's not that difficult. I'm still a bit nervous about not getting time to prepare and practice. Well, just for practice, let's do one of the topics we looked at earlier. Which one did you find interesting? Um, can you please remind me what they were? Happiness is how advertising dictates what we look like, when I'm alone, 
and we are all victims. I like the topic how advertising dictates what we look like. Well, what ideas can you come up with? In trying to be perfect, we put ourselves through emotional and physical pain. Well, what does that have to do with advertisers dictating what we should look like? Well, the models that we see in magazines and TV ads are portrayed as being perfect. We all want to be desirable, so we put ourselves through emotional and physical pain. By doing things like excessive exercising, dieting and cosmetic surgery in order to become real versions of these models. Well done, you came up with that really quickly and you didn't even have to do any research. Now how can you introduce this? How about advertisers have the power? We put ourselves through emotional and physical pain by doing things like excessive exercising, dieting and cosmetic surgery in order to become the real versions of these models. Who gave the power of dictating what we should look like to the advertisers? So by accepting myself and not comparing myself to unrealistic pictures, I take back the power from the advertisers. Well done, Palessa. The conclusion should be short and effective and hopefully leaves the audience with something to think about. And with three or more points jotted down on speech cards, you're almost ready to go. In this case, it's really important to use the key points and rehearse what you are going to say in your mind. Then all you have to do is approach your topic from an angle that interests you. Okay, maybe it's not that scary, but can we please recap what we did today? Sure. Use speech cards with notes. And as with prepared speeches, brainstorm two or three main points. Then write an effective introduction and conclusion. Finally, mentally develop your points into a discussion. Now all you have to do is to relax and enjoy it. And remember, you will have the chance to get up and speak in front of everybody without having to spend weeks of preparation. To check if you are able to write speech cards for an impromptu speech, here is your task for today. Here are the topics for unprepared speeches we saw earlier. Choose one and write the key points you would cover on cards. Once you have done all of this, you might get the opportunity to present your speech and then you will see how much the guidelines in this lesson will help. Well, thank you for joining us in the studio, Palessa, and I hope all of you enjoyed our series on planning speeches. Goodbye. Bye.